Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, it's Zach Grant here with the University of Illinois Extension and the Urban Ed Connect vlog series. The summer equinox is nigh. Uh, we are getting close to the longest day of the year. Uh, it's the end of June here, It's but it feels like mid of August. It's really high heat index today, very high humidity levels. Um, it's about 100 on the heat index, about 90 degrees outside, so it's very sticky. It's actually, fortunately, it's not super sunny right now. It's a little overcast. And in the high tunnel, actually, we have the 30% shade cloth on currently, uh, which we're going to take off next week because it's going to get back down to normal temperatures. But we've had it on for the past week because we've had three or four days out of seven that are really hot. Um, and we're just getting into some uh, cherry tomatoes starting to ripen in the high tunnel. Uh, and some of the earliest sort of globe tomatoes are sizing up pretty nicely, but I want to get that a shade cloth off and next week get some really good growth but today the reason why i wanted to do a vlog is because we just got a shipment of beneficial insects from from a company in new york that we've been working with i have some uh footage from in april when we started some releases of some aphid specialists so we released some aphidolides and uh, aphidious wasps that are specialists that seek out uh, aphids and and kill them uh the, the aphidious mix that we release those are the wasps that infect the aphids and have the classic uh, uh parasitized sort of mummy aphids on the leaves that you might recognize uh, but today we actually got a shipment of uh, a white fly biocontrol agent so in carcia formosa we got some more aphidious uh wasps for aphids and then i also purchased some uh, convergent lady beetles as well uh, to release a few cups of those into the tunnel so with augmentative biological control you know you don't really just release these things just once this will be our second release uh, with our first release i definitely am noticing some particularly with the aphidious definitely some mummification of aphids but uh, we recently had some white fly outbreak and i haven't released the biocontrol agent for that yet have been using some uh sort of omri uh, biorational or organic approved soft um, insecticides in there, things like uh, uh, I think it's Bovera vicina, which is um, like a uh, it's a like a myco control agent, or it's, it's a fungus, or it's a bacterium that is supposed to uh, control the aphids pretty well. So so results, uh, as well as using some insecticidal soap and a little bit of neem of a neem product in there as well. And then also with our pepper plants in there, just kind of trying to spray off the aphids. Uh, but the, it's a pretty medium sized infestation in there. So I wanted to do another release in there uh, of, of really high numbers of, of beneficial insects, just to kind of try to get established and knock down the aphid and white fly uh, pressure that's going on in there. It's not really affecting growth too much, except for on the peppers, as, as you'll see when we get in there. But I just wanted to uh, continue to uh, trial this biological control agents. We have some faculty and some of my colleagues working on uh, aphid beneficial augmented biological control as a part of a grant. And we're we'll looking forward to look towards those results, but I'm still kind of just experimenting with it here at the demonstration site. So let's go ahead and check uh, out what, what we have. I'll show you how it came uh, in the box. Talk a little bit about that. And then we'll go ahead and go release it uh, into the high tunnel and I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here's the package that I received. This is from a company called IPM Labs in Lock, New York. I actually have a, I have to put a link maybe in this vlog on the YouTube channel, a link to an, a list of a number of different vendors that supply uh, beneficial insects. So I'm not advocating for IPM Labs, it's just the one we happen to work with out of New York. Now their prices were very competitive. And there's others like Arbico Organics, and there's there's a few others that, that are here um, domestically. But there is a list that I believe Cornell puts out of a number of different um, uh, integrated pest management, beneficial insect brewing uh, companies that you can purchase these from. So typically, you know, this is a pretty sensitive shipment, okay? So this is something that you place the order. I placed this order, I believe, uh, late last week, and they were waiting on the arrival of the ladybugs. So you can see the ladybugs are here, uh, and there's a little bit of bedding in there, a container with uh, some poles, and they are just lively in there right now, okay? Um, but these are live insects, so they need to have, uh, you know, get to their destination quickly, 
not be exposed to too much additional heat. And, you know, usually what they'll do is the company will overnight them to you. So the shipping is pretty expensive, I believe. The shipping for this box was about $30 to get sort of priority overnight shipping. Uh, so make sure you, you can do that. Make sure you are there when this arrives so you can get them out of the package uh, really quickly. In fact, there's some labeling on the box. You know, do not freeze, do not overheat, do not delay. So this is a really special delivery. Uh, so these weren't cooled. Uh, this is this is the aphidious mix. So it has four different species of aphidious in it. They call it the AFI um, mix system. And this actually came in this sort of uh, sort of cool wrap. There's this little cool gel pack that's in here. This little ice gel pack insulated in this package because these needed to stay at a reasonable temperature. Um, so this is the aphidious mixture. Okay, so these are the adult. These are already adult hatched um, wasps that are inside of here. You'll see what that looks like when we open it up. I don't want to open it up out here because it will release a good chunk of them. Same thing with the lady beetles. Uh, you want to make sure you're releasing these inside of your tunnel or in your garden space if you're going to try to do this out of doors. And then finally, here is the white fly uh, parasitic wasps uh, in Carcia formosa. These come in these little, essentially it looks like these little egg clusters, and these are little hang tags and we'll go strategically place these in the tunnel. We'll hang them from some bottom leaves on the tomatoes and peppers in there, kind of give them a little bit of shade, and then the parasitic wasps will emerge um, from those little scaly eggs and uh, seek out the white flies to parasitize. Okay, so this is essentially it. This is the, the package, this is what it looks like. So aphidious wasps, the lady beetles, and the incarsa formosa uh, wasp tags. So you pretty much want to release these as soon as you can. Okay, I'm, if I had these actually in our cooler in here for a couple hours. I believe you can keep the lady beetles for about a week uh, in the refrigerator, you know, above freezing at sort of refrigerator temperatures. But ideally you'd want to, so you could kind of slowly release them. Uh, this is a full cup's worth, I believe. I thought that's what I ordered. The equivalent of a cup of lady beetles spread out over these three containers. Uh, this is about a thousand parasitic wasps, and this is 750 of uh, the aphidious wasps. So when you call or work with one of these companies, they'll usually, based on the size of your greenhouse or high tunnel, they can tell you, you know, if you have, you know, severe infestation or this is just sort of maintenance control. They can give you the, you know, exact amounts that you'll need for that square footage. So I'm primarily utilizing augmented biological control inside of a tunnel, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, primarily because it's a very targeted space where you can exactly measure out uh, your beneficial insect releases, but also I can contain them within that space. Whereas if you were to release, like for instance, these lady beetles into your garden out of doors, they may only stick around for a couple of days. If they don't have you know, a water source or a food source, they may just flee from, from your garden. Uh, the lady beetles aren't too expensive, so Maybe it's not a terrible idea to, to release those, especially if you have, you know, heavy aphid pressure or other insect pressure. But some of the, the Incarcia formosa and aphidias are pretty expensive. So uh, you would want to make sure that those are going to be effective where you release them. Um, with, the, with the aphidias, you'll be able to tell, uh, actually with that, both that and Incarcia, you'll be able to tell if you're parasitizing the aphids and the white flies. So you'll be able to measure of the effectiveness of, of your release. The other thing to note, uh, Incarcia and Aphidias are, are specialists. So these are targeting specifically white flies, specifically aphids for Aphidias. The lady beetles are what we call sort of generalist uh, beneficial insects. So these are gonna feed on a number of different things. Aphids, likely white flies, spider mites. So they're gonna eat a lot of different things. And yeah, so, and you'll see in the tunnel, we actually have, so our vents are not covered, but our end walls are covered and we can keep the door closed to kind of try to keep these inside of the tunnel so they don't escape. I, I know that very likely some of them are going to escape, uh, but I think it's worthwhile, especially in a tunnel or a, definitely in a greenhouse that's fully enclosed and has uh, insect screening on it uh, to use augmented biological control. Uh, it, it, it can work well if your pressure isn't, isn't too high and you can get these populations established and you can act, actually monitor both your pest pressure and your beneficial uh, insect effectiveness and population 
inside. So there are some tips with, with these things. All of them really should probably be released either early in the morning or later in the evening. Right now, I have, it's a little overcast, even though it's warm outside, and I have the shade cloth on the tunnel. So it's pretty, it's, it's about the same air temperature as outside with not a lot of direct sun in the tunnel. And as you'll see, I have a, a pretty good canopy of peppers and tomatoes in there. So there are plenty of spots for these things to find shade and some moisture. Uh, so that should be good. Uh, otherwise, you definitely want to release them later in the evening if you can. Uh, for the Aphidiolides, I remember they want you to turn off the, the horizontal airflow fans, but I don't think for Aphidius that's necessary. So, um, so yeah, definitely in, in the shade if you can, in the canopy, um, definitely later in the evening if possible, and releasing them as soon as you can after you get them. You don't want to hold on to your beneficials uh, for too long. Okay, so this is what they look like. Uh, this is the packaging they, they come in. And now we'll go ahead and take these into the tunnel and, and start releasing them. And I'll try to capture a little bit about my process for uh, releasing these in the tunnel. So let's go ahead and bring these in there and give it a shot. This pepper is where we've been having lots of aphid pressure. And I just applied some water here. Um, and you can see if I zoom in it, here you can see lots of contamination from aphids and white flies. You can see some of the aphidious mummies there where my thumb is. Uh, so that's a good thing. So I do have some aphidious populations in here established. And uh, that, that is great. But I, I want to, you know, put in a few more for some additional augmentative control, even though I know I have some populations established. And, you know, all of this, the white material you see on the leaves, those are all white flies. So definitely have some major white fly pressure. In fact, we can go ahead and look at the back side of this right here to kind of get a feel for what's going on. Lots of white fly pressure, some of the aphids, some of the parasitized aphids. If you zoom in and see that if I can kind of that, that brighter orange, that very well could be an Aphidolides larva right there. Uh, I'll have to confirm that either the Aphidolides or the Aphidias um, that actually may be actively feeding on some of the aphids as we speak. So these are the things you want to monitor for. You want to look for, you know, your pest problems, but also your beneficials and make sure, you know, especially, you know, because a lot of these are really sensitive to even organic or, you know, biorational or biological uh, pest, pest insecticides. So you want to be very careful and, and monitor. That's why, you know, these augmented biological control systems you can get these populations established, they can keep, especially white flies and aphids, uh, pretty pretty much in check. But, you know, even with this heavy pressure, you can see they're coming along fairly nicely. I feel like the peppers are set back a little bit. There are some, a little bit of aphid and white fly pressure at the base of some of the tomato plants you see here, but they're not really affecting the growth too much. Um, we're getting a lot of growth, a lot of vegetative growth in here. I'm actually gonna do a petiole sap test here and potassium petiole sap tests. Uh, I've had the shade cloth on for about a week. I'm gonna take it off because I think they're doing okay. They might be getting a little vegetative on me. Uh, you can see some of the, the early girl, girl fruit. Uh, this is a 60 day, very early globe tomato, this little uh, replicate right here uh, with the kind of droopy looking leaves. Uh, those are planted on April 22nd in here, and they're a 60-day tomato from transplant, so we should be starting to see some vine-ripe fruit, and I'm not yet, but we did, these uh, tomatoes were set back from uh, some 2,4-D uh, drift, vapor drift into the tunnel, so they could be, you know, back by about a week or two set back, but still really much, a lot further along than any of the tomatoes out of doors, you can see here, so... Lots of indeterminate. Here's a little row of BHN589. This is a, a determinate tomato that's recommended for high tunnel. So you can see we're actually basket weaving these. Everything else is being trained vertically uh, to one or two stems. And here are some of the cherries. And Sakura, you can see down here, we do have some ripe uh, cherries here on the end. They're just starting to ripen up. Uh, I believe that is a 55 day ripe cherry tomato. So that makes sense. Th those are about right on cue. We're hoping to see uh, lots of tomato production in here. And this is the environment I'm gonna release uh, these beneficials into. So we'll go ahead and start with 
uh, the convergent lady beetles here, okay? So what I've done is, and we'll, we can start down here, is I've sprayed the plants down to kind of dislodge some of the pests, but also to create a little bit of moisture uh, so the beetles will stick around. So they're not, they don't just uh, flee uh, the moment I release them in here. So I'm gonna, and I, you can see I've created a few little puddles on the landscape fabric. So hopefully this shade cloth uh, and, and moisture here will, will be enough to, to keep these, these guys around for a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this off. So I just snapped the container off, as you can see here, and I'll remove the lid and you can see they're, they are pretty much rearing and ready to go. So I can see they're already starting to fly away a little bit, but I'm gonna just go ahead and knock them, you know, a few of them onto some of these plants. They're already crawling on me a little bit. I think if you can get them, some of them onto the plants, into some of these little nooks, you know, preferably in the shade. Probably gonna end up knocking some of them on, on, onto the ground. So you can see, just starting to, to release them. You know, I may in a couple spots just actually leave the container, you know, kind of on the ground at the base and allow them to gradually work their way uh, into into some of the, the plantings here. And again, I know I'm probably going to lose some of these. And I recognize that. Um, but these, the lady beetles aren't too expensive. Uh, I believe this is only like 25 or $30 for this full cup. Whereas some of the other beneficials are are pretty expensive, so let's, I'm just going to kind of go around here and and release them into a few different spots. And unfortunately, I got the drip tape down there too, so there's going to be lots of good spots for them to find moisture. And you know, I'm hoping there's just enough uh, aphids in a few different spots uh, that they stick around. So I mean, again, I don't have. The, I'm just going to set this on the ground for a minute, let them release on their own. You know, I do have the end wall louvers are open and they likely will remain open for a while. You know, I could, ideally I would actually have insect netting boxes on the outside of this. I was planning on building them, insect screening, a big box on the outside so they can't get out through the vent louvers. But on the side walls, it's hard to see in the camera, but I actually do have insect screening all along there. Uh, and I temporarily turned off the end wall fan. I'm going to keep the half fans on. And I'll probably just leave that off until I leave to give them a chance to kind of try to get established in here. But I'm going to go ahead and release those in a few spots. Um, again, this is where there's a lot of uh, white fly pressure and aphid pressure over here. So I'm going to maybe start over here. Just trying to release them in a few strategic locations. But definitely trying to keep them in the shade uh, like I did right here, keeping them in the shade uh, and near a water source uh, so they don't get discouraged with their environment and immediately fly away. So we'll give those a minute to, to get established. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is release uh, the aphidias here, okay? So this one, as soon as I open this, you will see adults start to fly out. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk along here and kind of tilt this at an angle and just release them into the canopy a little bit. So we can start kind of right here and you can see some of them in there. Okay. You can see them working their way around in there. There aren't a ton. There aren't, the last time I got this, there was a ton that were just starting to merge, but you can see them crawling around in there. It'll take them a minute to kind of figure out that they're now free. So I'll just kind of keep this at a bit of an angle and just kind of keep walking in under the canopy here. And hopefully I can release some of them gradually make their way out. Otherwise, I'll probably try to figure out a way to maybe uh, put some of this bedding. Actually, no, I, I think I'm not supposed to do that because you can kind of see there are some eggs that I think are still yet to hatch in there. So I might place this in a strategic location, maybe on, on a cinder block right there. Uh, 
underneath the plant canopy so they gradually release. So I'm gonna kind of walk around with this for a little bit and release these. And then the last thing I'll do is uh, hang the Incarcia Formosa tags in a few different spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here uh, and release the rest of this off camera. Okay, you can see them right here. I'm gonna just try to maybe get a little bit more footage of it. So they're not, they're probably all not gonna wanna come out right away. So I'm gonna just leave it open. And I think we're supposed to leave it somewhat open and maybe at a little bit of an angle. So they gradually work their way out and they, the eggs still have some humidity in there so they don't dry out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set this down for a minute and then regroup to, to hang some of the Incarcia Formosa tags. All right, so here we are. I've pretty much released everything to my satisfaction. So here are the Incarcia tags. You can see them. I have them hanging kind of in the canopy of the tomato plants. I've released most of the lady beetles. I'm just gonna leave these containers kind of open and in the shade, kind of close to a moisture source. And hopefully they, they all uh, uh, come out and find a bunch of aphids and other insects to eat. So I've strategically placed those uh, lady, beetle, lady beetle caps and containers throughout the high tunnel in a few locations. Another one over here. Okay. The other thing I did with uh, Incarcia, well, not Incarcia, with the Fidelides, you can see in the shade, in the can, if I find an, a nice little uh, leaf nook or a leaf ledge, if you will, I've scattered some of the the bedding for the Aphidias. So here's an example right here. You can see that I actually have it. A little bit of the bedding. There might be some uh, aphid larva and a couple other things in there that are gonna emerge yet. And I have them kind of in the shade and hopefully they finish emerging and seek out aphids to kill. So that's pretty much it for the release. Oh, here's the, what I did, I'm just gonna leave it kind of on its side and at an angle. So as they continue to emerge, the aphidias continue to emerge, they'll hopefully come out of there and find their way to uh, some aphids. So, again, you know, wanting to release these later in the day is probably better. Again, I have the shade cloth on. I know I'm going to lose some beetles because of the end wall louvers, but hopefully enough of them stay in here to kind of establish themselves and uh, begin to seek out some prey. So, we're going to we'll go ahead and end this one here. Uh, just wanted to show you a little bit about uh, what that looks like when those beneficials uh, come, shipped, and what we do to release them. All right, so until next time, we'll talk to everyone soon. Good growing.